hi guys welcome back to my channel this is marvin if today is the first time of stopping by you're most definitely welcome if you're a returning subscriber thank you for coming back again to my channel so i'm basically an international student living here in canada and i share my life experiences here in canada as an international student so today i'm going to be touching on things to do in order to prevent study permit refusal or visa rejection so stay tuned and keep watching so first and foremost a disclaimer i am not an immigration consultant i am just sharing my two cents based on stories i know and experiences i've had I know many people get study permit refusals or visa rejections and the kind of responses you guys get from IRCC are mostly the same. That maybe they are not convinced that um, the individual is going to go back to their home country due to the insufficient home ties shown or sometimes uh, they also see that the proof of financial support the person has shown is not enough to take care of them throughout their whole stay in Canada, so therefore they are refused. So today I'm going to be putting out some pointers to consider in your application so as to make your case stronger. So the first point to note is when applying to come to Canada for schooling, um, choose a program which is one year and above because it will not make sense for you to spend all this amount of money to come to Canada and then you only come and spend, let's say, six months or five months for, you know, a particular program, right? So it makes more sense or, you know, it kind of like is convincing enough that if you apply for a program which is a year and above, at least it's, it's quite like a good commitment or a good investment that you know you will come here and come and stay for at least a year right to complete your program so it makes more sense or it's convincing enough rather than choosing a program or you know a course which will only last for six months or five months no number two point is choose a program that makes sense with your background now the reason why i say this is that um normally assuming if you are coming from an engineering background let's say you did mechanical engineering in your undergrad and you are looking forward to applying for a program for masters right and you choose um for instance um masters in mechanical engineering it makes more sense because it's like a continuity right of um the kind of um, foundation you've had in your undergrad so it makes more sense as to why you are coming in to do a master's in engineering or for instance if you you did um, electrical engineering as your undergrad and you are coming to do maybe a master's in electrical and electronics it makes more sense in that way because you are still doing in the same kind of field right so that way it, it convinces them that you know um, you know what you are about and secondly to what i'll talk about is some people end up you know getting jobs in different fields from what they actually studied back in their undergrad for instance normally people end up doing like let's say mathematics or even engineering uh, during their undergrad and then after school they end up in you know working in the bank or something like that so if for their masters they want to do something in maybe economics or banking and finance you know something which is not the same as engineering or what they offered back in their undergrad it makes more sense because they've happened to you know work and get like experience in the particular field they are looking forward to you know better on so it makes more sense in that way so always make sure that your your the kind of program you are you know coming in to do uh, matches with either your educational background or your professional background and in this way i'm not saying that if i mean the kind of program you want to come and offer doesn't you can't apply for it if it doesn't you know have any link to your background 
of course there are certain people that are also looking forward to let's say switching their careers you know totally i heard or i, I saw somebody who shared like her story when she was back in her home country she was an hr officer right and she did that for like a couple of years and then it got to a point when things weren't going on well and her company closed down she wanted to you know immigrate to canada so she wanted to you know change um, her her you know her trajectory completely so she decided to come and do nursing here in canada so it happens in that way you should be able to convince the immigration officer as to why you are making this big switch you know maybe for instance i'm just giving an example maybe like um when you were a child you always wanted to be a nurse or you always wanted to be in the you know the medical field but due to financial constraints or um due to you know maybe parental control you ended up you know towing in the line of maybe an hr human resource field right so now that you are of age you feel like it's time for you to you know pursue what you really love so hence you want to you know go into nursing or you want to go into medicine you know in that in that in that way it makes more sense so you should be able to be like more convincing right as to why you are making this big switch so the third thing i'll talk about is your program should have good prospects in your home country so they also look at those things for example if let's say you are coming to do nursing in canada right you've applied you've gotten your admission and you are applying for your study permit right or your student visa they look at the prospects of nursing in your home country for instance, if let's say there are not enough hospitals or there are so many nurses in Ghana and you coming to do nursing and going back to your home country doesn't, you know, it's not, it's not like positive. Let me just use positive, right? It will not make sense as to why you still want to come and do nursing in Canada. And whilst you know that if you go back to your home country, there's no space for you or there's no vacancy so you should pick a program which has good prospects don't just apply for any course or any program for instance if you want to do mechanical engineering right and you've gotten your admission and everything and you're applying for your um, study permit or your student visa you need to state in your letter of explanation that maybe the government has so so and so plans or so so and so projects which are coming up in the in the couple of years or the current employer you are with will be happy to you know take you back after you are done with your your master's degree or your postgraduate or whatever program you are coming to canada to do you know there should be some form of you know projects or uh, prospects right that you can look forward to you know after you are done with your 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 program or after you are done with your you know your studies here in canada so they also check all those things if your government has made known some major projects in that particular field you should state them in your letter of explanation that you know what as i'm coming to study maybe electrical engineering the government of ghana has already put in place to set up you know a lot of um car manufacturing or assembly plants in ghana or they are looking forward to you know increasing the energy capacity in ghana you know those kind of projects and then it will make sense that you know what even if this person comes into study maybe engineering in a couple of years time or in a couple of years you know there are more like there'll be more you know um vacancies or jobs that will be available for him to be able to you know tap in once he's done with his studies here in canada the fourth point i will touch on is you need to show why the kind of program you want to come and read in canada can't be offered back home or in your home country because if you want to come and study nursing in canada of course nursing is also offered in ghana so why do you want to waste all this money or spend so much to come to Canada and come and study nursing, which is also offered in your home country. Because mind you, 
your application should be in such a way that they expect you to leave Canada once you are done with your studies. That's the baseline. They expect you to leave Canada once you are done with your studies. So anything you are putting in your application, it has to convince them that when you are done with your studies, you go back to your home country. For instance, right, I did mechanical engineering during my undergrad and I want to come and further my studies or do a master's degree here in Canada. How can I convince them that master's in mechanical engineering is also offered in Ghana? So why, why is this boy uh, why does this boy want to come to Canada to come and study the same like uh, in, um, mechanical engineering masters? So I need to convince them. I can say that you know in Ghana um, during my undergrad, the whole you know education was um, theory based. I didn't get a lot of hands-on experience or the equipment and the technology in my home country is a kick and it's not modern and because my home country is a developing country it will be better for me to you know go to a, a technologically advanced country or a country with modern technology to be able to you know uh, acquaint myself with what the world is currently using or modern trends right so that when i'm done with my studies and I, I go back to my home country at least i'm coming back with new ideas i'm coming back with them um, advancements right in, in in terms of like technology wise you know something like that so you need to be convincing enough as to why the particular program you are coming to study can't be taken or can be offered in your own country so the fifth point i'll touch on is guys avoid misrepresentation or avoid misrepresentation so what do i mean by avoid misrepresentation if you've ever been refused visa or if you've ever been denied entry into any country at all any country even if it's the country is in africa guys write it or put it in your application because they will ask you whether you've been you know refused visa to any country and even if it's 10 years or 15 years don't forget to just put it inside put it inside though because it's very very important if you lie they'll catch you because once they enter your your uh, passport number into their database or into their system it will just show up it will show up so there's no reason why you would want to lie in this case if at the end of the day they'll catch you I remember in 2017, I traveled to Germany and when I went for my interview, they asked me why I got rejected by the UK because I think prior to that year, I tried going to the UK for holidays, I think twice on two occasions. So I, I put it in my, my, my document or in my application that I had been rejected by or had been refused by the UK uh, on this number of occasions and they'll ask you why you were refused and then I give them like the reasons why I was refused because I, I used to keep all those documents like the refusal notes the reasons why I was refused I used to keep all of them so I knew why I was refused and then when I got there I told them why I was refused and it didn't spoil anything I still got my visa even though UK had refused me visa like some years back right so don't lie don't lie this is very like critical it's very important don't lie otherwise you mess up your whole you know application and you can even actually even get a five-year ban for that just for lying right so there's no reason why you would you would lie in this case and i know some agents or some people tell their their clients that if they've ever been refused they shouldn't put it in inside like their application guy put it in your application it doesn't mean that once one country has rejected you canada will also reject you i mean they are looking at your application the way it is so if you've shown beyond reasonable doubts that you know when you, you are fit to enter into Canada and once you are done with your studies, you are going to go back to your home country. Why would they reject you? 
you know maybe in your past application you, you made certain mistakes or you weren't aware of certain rules or certain laws or certain things you were supposed to do properly so at least this time now you've gained you know more knowledge about these procedures so why would they reject you if your application is perfect they won't so guys put it inside or put it inside if you've ever been rejected entry into any country state it inside sometimes some people are lucky rcc can get back to them that you know they've noticed that you've been rejected to so so and so country before but why didn't you you know put it in your application when you were applying and if you are lucky they give you some number of days to respond to them right so if you don't respond to them within like the time the time they, they, they've given to you your application will be rejected and you can even get a ban for that so just to avoid all you know like that long process when you're applying just state it there there's this um a particular form you feel or sometimes they ask you like in the questions you know whether or not you've been denied entry into a particular country or even if you've overstayed in a particular country state it inside once you've been asked and also guys if you have like a sibling in canada or you have a family member in canada and you are asked whether you have um, a family member in canada or not don't lie don't lie i'm begging you in the name of god don't lie just state it that or maybe you have a brother who is also you know studying in so so and so university and is also in canada or your dad or i don't know your sister is already in canada don't lie because in the long run all these documents they are going to keep it like they'll keep um i mean your profile and it might go against you when you are applying for other things as the years go by so just don't lie just tell the truth so the sixth point i'll touch on is show proper home ties show proper home ties sometimes when it gets to this point people don't know what exactly they are supposed to show right so for instance if you are married and you are coming to canada to study obviously you'll be leaving your wife behind or you'll be leaving your partner behind and if you are married you surely have your uh, marriage certificate you can use that as you know a proof of home tie because you are leaving your you know your partner behind if you have kids you need to show them their birth certificates you know to prove that they are your children and you are leaving them behind so i mean once you are done with your studies you surely go back for them or you surely go back to your own country if you have um, landed property show proper documentation proper ownership documents that the said property belongs to you it's in your name everything is there if it's a landed property show the site plan the ownership documents you know who you bought it from who was the previous owner now you are the new owner how much you paid for that particular property show everything show all the, the proper documentation show them if you owe a, if you own a business show your business um, your registration certificate and obviously your business should be paying tax you need to show your tax returns so your tax forms you know that you, you pay your taxes and everything right show proper documentation if you are currently a you are currently an employee of a particular establishment if you are taking um, a steady leave from your company there should be like a document which shows that the company i mean is giving you a steady leave of maybe a year or two years it shows that once you are done you surely go back to your home country to continue your 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 work with your employer right show proper documentation don't put some and leave some any proper document you have of anything that can tie you back to your home country put it in there put it in there don't be afraid put it in there once it's proper it will be considered so the last point i wanted to touch on was showing correct proof of funds showing correct proof of funds on financial support but i already have a video i did talking about how to show proof of funds so i'll just link it up here 
so you can click on it and then watch that video as well but i've been getting questions um, as to whether people should do like affidavit of support or attest do attestation on their financial documents for the study permit application um well i didn't do that i didn't i didn't do any attestation i didn't do any affidavit for any of my documents right and then i still got my study permit approved i know a lot of people who didn't do that as well and still got their study permit approved some people also did it and then they still got their study permit approved right so what I would say is that I don't think that is will be a major source of concern, right? As to if you did it or not. And then we will use that to, you know, refuse your application. No, I don't think that will be like a major source of worry or a major source of concern. Cause yeah, just make sure you take all the boxes. Make sure you present a proper application for your study permit or your student visa and i mean once everything is legit once everything is in is the way it's supposed to be and you are able to convince them enough i think you are you are good to go so i would say if you still want to you know go ahead and do an affidavit or do an attestation of your financial documents you can go ahead and do it if you think you provided proper documentation and you've you've shown like proper proof of financial support and you don't want to do like the affidavit or attestation you can also go ahead and apply for your study permit as well so this brings us to the end of today's video and i hope this information will be very useful for anybody looking for it to you know applying for his or her study permit or student visa and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also like, comment, and share my videos. See you same time next week. Bye.